Hi guys, today's video is a deep dive on the northern Thracian factions added into RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6 and their associated AOR units. It's taken from a longer video I did with Mausolos on the Thracian and Anatolians, so check that out in the description and the unit videos where we go over these units in detail. Like and subscribe guys, and without further ado, enjoy. So on to the Bessie then. So, uh, Bessie over here. Uh, three, three settlements, Philippopolis, Diopolis, and Bessapara. And yeah, pretty, uh, pretty kind of central start, I guess, uh, in terms of where they are. They've got enemies all around. They're probably bordering, they're bordering, like, four factions, four different, or five different, six different yeah. factions, should I say. So, pretty, yeah, uh, pretty, um... Uh, central position and Philippopolis I'm guessing that's a Greek name so how did they come to get that and you know how did they end up here basically yeah, I mean the 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 the, the, the Bessie are um, I'd, I'd say my favorite Thracian faction because they were the madman <laughs> <laughs> against among the Thracians and um, Philippopolis yeah um, it um, probably already existed um, as Pulpudeva uh, and I think it, it, it was a city in, in the original Vanilla Rome Total War, as Pulpudeva. Mm. And uh, however, in 341 BC, Philip II, again, <laughs> <laughs> he conquered it and he renamed it after himself. Classic. Uh, as, a, as a moderate human being, he was. He, uh, <laughs> um, but after him and Alexander, of course, the Antigonids had other Macedonian contenders and all that, so they lost some of these territories. But on the Bessi, after after their defeat against Philip II, um, they would not really pass from history. There is or um, the another tribe among them, the D E or Dai I yeah. or Dai or whatever you want to say, <laughs> pronounce it like. Um, so um, they were regarded by Thucydides in the fifth century BC during the Peloponnesian War as the most most warlike of all Thracians. And um, therefore, they get a unit, um, the DI or whatever swordsman unit uh, is available to the Bessie. And it's a pretty powerful unit. Yeah. Um, so um, that makes them already a bit more interesting, I'd say, that they have that unit. Yeah. But um, they also resisted all their neighbors for a long time after under Philip V, once again. <laughs> um, they raided the Macedonians. But Philippopolis was later uh, conquered by uh, Philip before then the Idrisians, the old guard in Thrak who were on the rise again in the second century BC, they would take Philippopolis. But then the Bessi, um, they would come uh, at the end of the second century BC. The Romans would meet them for the first time. Yeah. Um, and Marcus Minucius Rufus, the consul, who um, had uh, successfully campaigned in Thrak, he also fought against them and erected uh, a statue which said that he defeated the Bessi and the rest of the Thracians, which implies that the Bessi were seen as the most difficult um, yeah. opponents of Thrak. And later there were other campaigns against them by Marcus Terentius Varro Lucullus. However, the most important, the most important moment basically came at the end of the first century BC, because in 229-28 BC, the sacred sanctuary of Dionysus, um, which the Bessie had on a mountain, mm. um, the, was, was taken away from them. And Marcus Licinius Crassus, um, the Roman consul and the grandson of the one who was um, killed at Carhe against mm. the, uh, the Parthians, um, Crassus um, gave it to the Odrysians, who were a Roman client state at this point. And um, the Bessi were not very happy about it. And in 15 BC, Vologaesis, a priest of the Bessi, the Dionysus priest, he um, called out uh, what could only be described as a crusade against the Romans, mm. the so called Holy War of the Thracians, which would go on for 14 years. Wow. And um, of course, there's only patchy accounts of this in the Roman sources. But it's pretty clear that uh, Augustus immediately dispatched several legions towards Thrak, but they, they had no success whatsoever against the Bessi. <laughs> War went on for 14 years, and um, there's no clear information in Roman sources um, how many losses they suffered in trying to 
oust the Basi from the position who'd also so, um, reconquered the, the sanctuary, I think, at one point. Um, and yeah, they, 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 they um, killed a lot of Romans um, because otherwise the war would not have gone yeah. on for 14 years. And um, after they'd then been put down, they would rebel again in 21 AD and then they would re revolt once more in 68 AD. And then in the second century, um, well, after 68 AD, I think the Flavians decided to just recruit um, a lot of Bessi into the Roman army yeah. <laughs> so that they could uh, would stop troubling the Roman authorities and instead use their aggression against the enemies of Rome. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess there's not that much information on it because the Romans like swept it under the rug. They're like, <laughs> yeah. ah, we're getting embarrassed here. That never happened, guys. I promise it never happened. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, exactly. you've, you've already mentioned the DI, the DI, the DI, the DE yeah. <laughs> swordsman. Uh, but they do do also have the Bessian swordsman as well. Yeah. So they've got a couple of swordsman unit that uh, units that probably will shred through some hoplites early game. And I think, um, yeah, yeah, I think Adrissians. If you are playing as the Adrissians, these guys are going to be a, a big priority early on because starting with three settlements, just like you, they're going to be a tough tough cookie to crack especially with their good units um so yeah uh, if you are playing the adrissians probably a good idea to try and take those guys out pretty early on uh yeah. but yeah let's move on to the tribali up here they actually start with a few settlements is it is it only three i thought it was uh, uh slightly more but no it's it's only three uh, it looks like over the tribali but they're kind of further north into would we be we'd probably be into maybe into romania by now uh it'd be close anyway uh, i guess so yeah these guys up here in the north i guess they were less hellenized than were they because they're further north yeah yeah actually i think there was a saying um basically tribali at some point was equated with the with uh, the worst barbarians the wildest people um and Aristotle says that for the Tribali, it is honorable to sacrifice one's life in battle. Mm. And uh, I think in Athens, um, like you said, like uh, nowadays, you lawless teenagers, basically, um, you call them vandals after also um, the, the another ancient people, of course, from late yeah. antiquity. But the Athenians called these um, the lawless um, teenagers, they called them Tribaloi after the Tribalians. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so, so that was their reputation. <laughs> yeah. Stand um, up, stand up, stand up reputation. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, exactly. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the Adrisians tried to conquer them in the 5th century, um, and he entered their kingdom, but... Um, they just killed him, the king, and <laughs> destabilized the Adrisian kingdom. And then the Autariati, an Illyrian tribe, um, probably pushed them further east. But uh, they, they recovered once again. They, they fought against the Athenians. And the Tribali um, also fought against Philip II, of course. <laughs> yeah. And he was wounded there by a long spear, which made us add the long spearman unit to the game. Um, and you probably speak about that, but in any case, Alexander the Great then subdued them again, of course. Um, but then they were attacked by the Autariata and by the Celts again, and after that, it's a bit murky, and we don't really know what happened. And we had a huge debate on that, but um, archaeological evidence seems to locate the Tribali in this territory still. I mean, maybe a bit further east or north from their old positions, and there were probably some Celtic influences on them, but. Um, which only means that they may also get uh, another Celtic inspired unit in the future, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the history after that event is a bit murky, but they're still being mentioned time again, so they were not completely destroyed. Um, it caused trouble to the Roman governors of Macedonia after Macedon was conquered, and then um, they still uh, are. Um, registered by the romans as an entity later on so they, they, they definitely survived and like the other thracians they, li they liked raiding macedon and then later the <laughs> roman empire yeah so i was a bit dumb there are four settlements for these guys not three i don't know how i didn't count the fourth one but anyway that's me um but yeah they do have the galatio thracian infantry as well uh so that yeah, kind absolutely. of brings a bit of a question so in terms of you, you mentioned the celts slightly there 
was there a lot yeah. of intermingling with the Celts? I guess I guess at this time a lot of cultures were very fluid. Um, so, like, did they, you know, intermingle a lot with the Celts, or was there a lot of, uh, you know, cultural cultural sharing, I guess, between the Celts and the Thracians in this area? So, I mean, originally the, the, the Celts basically arrived as invaders, and um, there's evidence that they inflicted a great defeat on the on on the um, uh, the Tribali, especially this this guy we are we're seeing here. Um, but of course, after the attack on Delphi, the, the, the various Celtic groups which had been on the Balkans before, they split into several major groups. One of them going to, to Asia eventually, which would form the Kingdom of Galatia. One would um, settle near Byzantium or north of Byzantium to form the Kingdom of Tylus in Thrak. Um, and then, of course, um, we have the Skodiski who went back to where they came from, basically. And then there were a lot of smaller Celtic groups and Celts. Yeah, they, they, they were everywhere in this period and from Tylus, but also in the adjacent regions. Um, we have graves that show that they sometimes mixed the Thracians and the Celts. They mixed it together and there's no, uh, no reason to think why they shouldn't, because that was a normal, very much a normal process in ancient times. So there was some kind of cultural um, fusion, and that's certainly true with the True Valley. That at this point they are strongly Celticized Thracian faction. Yeah, cool, interesting, very interesting. The Skordiski, who would have knew, known, invading into Thrace, very cool um, <laughs> indeed. So, uh, Kabile or Kabil or Kabil um, <laughs> over here. <laughs> Between Tylus and the Adrissians and Pontic Pentapolis as well. I believe they've only got one settlement. Uh, so kind of stuck between a rock, a rock, a rock and a hard place. Um, so, yeah. yeah. How about these guys? So um, you were saying Tylus uh, was sort of a Celtic nation. Um, yeah. So I guess that's probably a source of a lot of conflict over here then between Kabile and them. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, once again, we have to speak about Philip II of Macedon, because he <laughs> came to Kab Kabyle, Kabyle, whatever, in the fourth century BC, and on his big Thracian campaigns, which we've already mentioned a few times, he also came to Kabyle and he um, he conquered it, and he founded um, a, a Macedonian colony there. Um, Strabo says that he took the most village-like people of his kingdom, whatever that is supposed to mean. <laughs> um, there, um, they still would have had a Greek identity, which is why they get um, Greek hoplites, um, but not phalangites, because he says that he took these, yeah, not not, not the best people apparently from his kingdom there. Um, so Kabila had an interesting history afterwards. I mean, we already saw um, the characters. Um, uh, if you waver about, yeah, exactly, the uh, above the, the the army against Kostokos and his father. What's his father called? If you can go to the settlement. Oh yeah, Spartacus. Exactly. They seen the name Spartacus as well. Basically, mm -hmm. more or less, already in existence. They minted coins, and um, they also had Greek and Celtic influences um, depicted on them. But overall, they seem to have stuck to the Macedonian identity very much. But you're right about the conflict with Tylus, because there is um, very much evidence that Kabila was eventually conquered by Tylus towards the end of the, uh, or the second half of the 3rd century BC, before Tylus itself would then be overrun by the Adrisians. <laughs> when the Adrisians re-erected their kingdom somewhat around 200 BC, because we already said they would also take Philippopolis later on, and um, they would take um, Kabila and probably Tylus. So you can see that the Adrisians really rebuilt, because at this point, when you start in 270 BC, they are very much at their lowest point, and mm -hmm. even the three settlements we gave them were a bit of speculation, because they're really, they were really smashed by the Tylian Celts, in the region and they had been trampled by the Macedonians and um, they're really uh, in a hard position and that I think now with all these other factions which which sprung up in the time the tribes that became that that regained the independence from them um, and these new kingdoms which were founded in this period new people that arrived like the Celts and Tylers I think we can now really simulate how difficult it would have been for the Adrisians at this time yeah definitely um and looks like a very interesting campaign hint hint um so yeah very interesting campaign as the adrisians with all these different enemies around you i mean 
you're pretty much bordering, you know, you're bordering the Seleucids, the Thracians, not quite the Ptolemies, but very close. Uh, you're the next faction we're going to look at, the Asti, um, then the, of course, Kabyle, um, and then you've got the uh, Tribali and the Bessi right nearby as well. So, got to be a pretty interesting campaign, I guess, and probably quite a hard one as well, I'd say, as the Adrissians. Uh, with all these different regions. Uh, but like you say, they are at the lowest point they've been at for a very long time. So that's pretty cool. Um, in terms of their units, Kabyle, they get the Macedonian Hoplites and they get a few other Greek units um, and the Kabylian Lancers. So how come... I mean, I'm guessing they get the Macedonian Hoplites because of Philip II then again and what you were saying about him coming and taking this region and setting up the colony. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah, exactly. Um, and there was Greek settlement and Spartacos and um, Skostokos. Yeah, I always forgot to figure these names. Um, yeah, Skostokos. On their coins, they depict themselves as um, yeah riding a horse and using a xyston like the like the Macedonian kings as xystophoroi. So that's why you get the Kabylian lancers. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So on to the Asti, which is this faction. Over here, that that's actually bordering Byzantium and the Adrissians, and that's uh, and Pont uh, sorry Pontic Pentapolis as well. Uh, Bizia, Bizia as their capital. That's very good pronunciation, by the way, everyone. That's exactly how it's pronounced. Um, and uh, these guys are sort of smack bang near Byzantium in the middle of Thrace uh, or the Thracian. I guess, is this a peninsula? The Thracian Peninsula, I don't know. I'm going to call it that from now on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, how about these guys? How were these guys getting on at the time? Yeah, so the Asti or the Astoi in, in, in Greek sources, they um, also probably have been there for a pretty long time. And um, they had kinks as well. And um, the Asti, um, they probably had their most famous period around the time when when, when our mod starts, even though um, they only get the one settlement, mm. um, which is it's a bit difficult to, to find more uh, settlements for them, to be honest. But um, it is interesting the, um, the, the role, to see the role of the Asti in this region, because um, around 260 BC, they attacked the southern cities of the Pontic Pentapolis. And apparently the, the military might of the Asti was, was great enough to threaten the Pentapolis, so that they would call the Seleucids for assistance. And um, this would lead later lead to the war, which we've already talked about in the last video, where uh, the Ptolemies, Heraclea, Pontique, Byzantium, Chios, and um, others would intervene on the site, um, uh, would intervene against the Petapolis, basically, because after the Seleucids had defeated the Asti, mm. they established a, a stronger presence in the region, which the Ptolemies didn't like, and the Petapolis then thrived and tried to control the Black Sea trade, which Byzantium didn't like, and then they also called Heraclea for help. So the Asti played a um, crucial role in all these relations, even though some of the sources actually call them Galatians. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> so the confusion in this period, and you can... <laughs> Like in the in the olden days, in the classical archaic period, you could use the word Thracian basically for any barbarian, and in the Hellenistic period, you use the word Galatian for any barbarian because they kind of replaced them as the stereotypical Northerners. Yeah, <laughs> and um, they were militarily powerful, especially in the third century. They threatened the neighbors, and then the Seleucid campaign was directed against them once again, and then um, they kind of um, disappear out of view in the second century BC. Yeah, but they make a bit of a comeback in the first century um, when um, an Astaian um, dynasty was part of the Adrisian house and the branches of the Roman client kings in the region and the Asti and um, the Adrisians and the Bessi, they were fighting over dominance in Thrak and the Romans, um, they, they meddled between them and um, of the, the, these would offer to become each of them would basically offer to to subsume themselves under the Roman power because they wanted to have an advantage in the in the internal battle for Thrak in the first century between BC between these three groups. Yeah, cool, nice. So in terms of their unique units, I don't think they've got any. No, no unique units for those guys. Um, yeah. So yeah, 
cool. Well, there's one thing I want to mention before we move slightly on to the Anatolians is uh, the unit, uh, the uh, diplomats. You can see, I bet A. Howell is screaming at the screen right now because we've not mentioned them. Uh, but yeah, the uh, <laughs> the diplomats look slightly different from the Greeks, so you can tell that it's not a Greek diplomat. You see the Greeks in uh, the white togas and the diplomats mm -hmm. of the Thracians in the black togas. Or, well, they're kind of like kind of got like yeah. a funky little pattern on them which is pretty cool uh but yeah so i think that does it for the thracians really cool indeed very very interesting few nations because like i said they're not really covered and they're often just lumped in with the dacians uh or the celts in a lot of mods and you know a lot of popular culture uh, and um of course you know in vanilla they're not even represented so uh, it's really cool to see them represented here and honestly their units pretty darn strong guys so if you want to play in this region and you don't want to play with phalangites or hoplites then you know odrissian kingdoms for you bithynia is for you they will be very very fun campaigns i can tell you uh, that i have played bithynia on the beta quite a bit because their roster is so so strong and yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's been so fun uh, basically just absolutely shredded the seleucids like, just came down here and just started eating territory for fun. Uh, because <laughs> my like my, my army is just so good. It's like it's like being on an actual Thracian raid. It's that good. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Really, really fun nations to play. And really cool and, rosters. And um, on a final note, I can, I can reveal a bit of a sneak peek. Um, mm -hmm. Because there are actually plans to make another of these Thracian factions playable. And to add more content to them which will probably come um, a bit after 0 to 60 is out. So be between 0 to 60 and 0 to 70, um, we will probably make one of the other Thracian factions playable and add a more, bit more content and text and all that. Um, yeah, right under the video, if you uh, listen to this point, which Thracian faction you would like to play as the most and which we should add, um, or just make a guess which you think which ones we will, which ones we would go for or which one we would go for. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, that's a very good segue, Mouseloss, to make sure you guys like and subscribe the video. Otherwise, Mr. Cherry will get you. And I know you guys all find him very scary and, uh, you know, kind of uncanny valley. But that's because he is. That's because he is, guys. That's because he is. So make sure you like the video or you're going to have some sort of weird chair-induced accident in the future. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I I'm not making any threats. I'm not making threats, YouTube. Please don't demonetize me. <laughs> I'm not making threats. Um, <laughs> I'm just joking, guys. Kind of. Mr. Cherry is scary, though.